Okay, now we're for real here. Good morning, everyone. My name is Chris McPeak. I work as the Director of Programs and Alumni Engagement here at the PCC Foundation, and we're joined by Clara Lee. Clara, why don't you give yourself a little shout out here? Good morning, everyone. My name is Clara Lee. I am the Program Coordinator at the Foundation Office, and I will be the familiar face for this whole community excellence grant process for most of you here. Right. So after you have been awarded a grant, notice how I say after you have been awarded. So I'm being positive and, and we're manifesting everybody who's in attendance today that you will be awarded a grant. Clara will be the person that you, that you turn to when you're ready to buy stuff and do all your paperwork. So I think we're a small enough group that we can do a quick whip around. Let me put everybody on gallery here. So I just want you to share your name and department and what you're thinking you would like to fund with a grant. And I'll just call on everybody as I see them in, in the box here. So Nick, would you like to go first? Sure. Yeah. I'm Nick Schultz. I'm in natural sciences and I received a grant last cycle. I'm looking to upgrade a little bit more of the histology equipment that I previously purchased. Excellent. And yeah, Nick has been like off and running with his with his grant program, which we of course greatly appreciate. So yeah, buying a lot of stuff. <laughs> good to have you back, Professor Kuroki. You are next. Hi, I'm Mikagi. I'll change my. <laughs> oh, you're fine. I just, I just I do that to distinguish my Zoom accounts. But I'm in English. A lot of fact. I'm in English, and a lot of faculty use this. Pro have started using this program called Hypothesis, which allows students to annotate text online, but also in a social manner that is less clunky than Google Docs and a little more collaborative. So we, we've been funding it with our English department funds, which, you know, it, it just, then, then we don't have those funds for other reasons. So, so I'm hoping that we could get a grant to fund that. And then right. maybe share that with the larger, you know, campus and see, because I think it has uses beyond just English. I mean, any, any content heavy subject, I think students in that field could really benefit from hypothesis. Nice. I'll look forward to learning more about that. All right, America, you are up next. Hi, good morning. My name is America and I work at the Dream Resource Center, formerly part of the Quest Center. And what we would like to fund with the grant is an educational field trip with advanced parole for undocumented students. Oh, lovely. That sounds amazing. Welcome, America. It's good to hear your voice. Thank you. Gregory Zamora, you are next. Hi. Yeah, I teach architecture in the VAMS department. And our technology, like forward thinking technology has been pretty out of date and we're kind of trying to attack this from multiple funding sources. And it's something that we want to do interdisciplinary within our division, kind of involve other, other of these applied arts that we work with. All right, great. Well, thanks for joining us. We're happy you're here. Bucky Bata, you are next. Hi, I'm Bucky Bada, and I'm on sabbatical right now. I'm a psychology instructor, and I'm on an OER sabbatical, and I'm thinking about possibly extending that further. I don't even know whether I'm allowed to apply for a grant since I'm on <laughs> sabbatical right now, but I'm here to learn. Excellent. We're glad you're here. You know, I think if you're on sabbatical now, but you're going to be back during the term that the, the cycle funding kicks in, I would think that that would be fine. We have we did have some people apply for a grant who were here when they applied, but were going on sabbatical. Those particular grants were not approved. But if you're going to be on campus during the period of time that your grant would be in motion, then I think, yeah, you're fine. So that either sounds, way. That sounds great. Thank you. Okay. And then our final guest is Raul Abanez. Did I say that right? I'm not sure. Raul, you, um, you came in a little late. We, we are just talking about, we're sharing our name and department and then kind of what we're looking to do with a grant. He mentioned on the chat, Chris, that his mic is currently down. Oh, but bummer. Okay. Trio. Yeah. All righty. Well, we're glad you're here anyway. <laughs> and yeah, put questions in the chat if you have them since your mic's not working. And yeah, let's get moving with our first 
first bit of info here. So we were very blessed with an incredible gift from Z Scott of $30 million back in 2021. And Dr. Andrew Jonas decided that this money would be endowed and that we would create a, a grant program that would allow funds to expand our expand our programming and basically take what is an incredible college and go from good to great. So the idea, as the slide says here, is we're supercharging qualities of our culture, providing seed funding and experimentation space to nurture, test, and scale up new projects. Nick mentioned already that he had a grant from this cycle. His, you say histrionics? Histology. Histology. Okay. And I still have no idea what that means, but it sounds sounds pretty important. So we we did a, a an information session on Flex Day, bulk back in the fall and the spring. We're currently doing two more workshops for folks that didn't join us on Flex Day. So we, you guys are here today. We're doing one more on Friday. And the applications are now officially open on Academic Works, BlackBot Award Management, which is the same software platform that we use for the scholarships. It has a very specific link. So you just need to answer the questions for this opportunity as opposed to needing to answer the questions for the student scholarships. So we'll send that link through the chat before we wrap up today. And there's a ton of info on our, our website as well. We'll cover a lot of that info today. We're going to close applications on March the 3rd, and that is the Friday going into spring break. And then we will announce recipients via email, but then we'll do kind of a big reveal at the annual PCC Awards festivities that that last year happened out on the mirror pools within a lovely tent and we'll do the Risser awards there as well and then you will begin to spend your funding for this grant cycle on July 1st 2023 that is where Clara's role in this in this party really kicks in because she oversees sort of the the purchasing and the managing of the spending of the money so Items that we will fund, specifically items and equipment that support academic excellence and innovation related to student learning in the classroom. And the easiest way to categorize that is that we're here to fund student success. Hardware and software is something that comes up. A lot of folks have an interest in subscribing to particular software. What, what we need to clarify on that, though, is that this is not the program you are pursuing if you have decided that your own equipment that sits on your desk that you work on daily needs an upgrade or you want to switch from being a PC person to a Mac person. So we're not upgrading individual equipment, but let's say you are, you're you wanting to fund a program where students will do design work on an iPad, we would be able to purchase iPads for, for a specific program, something like that. And of course, if we want the college to service the equipment, which obviously we, we do want that, then we want to make sure IT is involved in the grant conversation that you're having while you're planning in terms of, you know, what kind of equipment do you recommend? How do I order it? Let's get it labeled and all that, all that good stuff. Okay, some specific things that we do not fund. So writing a grant that basically outlines a program that would require you to have an individual stipend for yourself. We're not going to fund that. Now, there may be stipends involved in your project, and a great example of this is the International Student Center did a grant that involved some stipending for some peer leaders, and that's something that we'd fund because the rest of their grant included programming money to do events for students. There may be, there were stipends involved in a very large project that Thea Alvarado had submitted that involved some self-study work on a bigger picture project that the, the campus is involved in. So stipends are being paid for that. So that's just some examples. If you had an idea for, you wanted to do a self-study course on how to code, and it was just something that you had a particular interest in and thought, oh, this would be a lovely project to introduce to the campus. So I want to pay myself to do this project. That's not the type of grant thing we're looking for. Okay, so what also will not be funded is budget supplanting. So we want to enhance funding, not replace funding, if that makes sense. 
and we would like your projects to be able to be completed within two years. So this grant cycle is for 2023 through 2025. And obviously anything that would be in violation or conflict with district policies won't be, will not be funded. As you work your way into the grant application and Black Bottle Award Management, these are the very specific things that you'll be responding to. So the first question, what exactly are you requesting? This will be a two to three sentence description of, of the project, kind of introducing like, this is the working title and this is what we're gonna be doing with it. The next question will be the big detail narrative on how that requested project or initiative will benefit students or benefit faculty and staff at PCC. So this is where you might go into, you know, the outline. My project consists of A, B, and C, and it'll be rolled out in this timeline, you know, January, February, March, et cetera. The third question is how will you make that difference occur and what are the activities that will be involved in the project? So that's just taking question two a little bit to the next level. And, and specifically, if you want to outline, you know, the various activities. And here's, here's an example. Maggie Rivera from the, from PASS is actually, her grant for 2022-24 had to do with taking students on a, a summer school sort of trip where they go and visit colleges. So her activity list would be, you know, starting June 1, we're going to this campus, we're staying in this residence hall, and we're doing this campus tour. And then two days later, we're leaving, we're getting on the bus, we're going to this campus, we're staying in this residence hall, we're doing this tour. So that's sort of an example there. And then the next question, how will you know that the project is successful and how will you measure attainment of your project goals? Here's where you're going to outline any sort of learning outcomes or, you know, key performance indicators, anything like that. How are you going to review the project and be able to say like, okay, I achieved my goal and this is, this is how that happened. And then the final thing that you'll, that you have to submit is a document explaining your budget. So you can do this in a couple of different ways. Some folks already know exactly what they want to purchase and exactly where it can be bought and, you know, exactly the, the link and the dollar amount, and the sales tax and the whole kit and caboodle. If you can figure that in a spreadsheet with, you know, quantity here, name of item here, link to purchase here, dollar amount here, that's fantastic if you can put that together. If you can't because you have an idea for a concept and you need to build some quotes in, then you could do a document that would include a narrative on what you're planning to do and what you think your costs are going to be. Obviously, the closer that you get to specific exact costs that show Clara exactly where she'll need to go to make the purchase, that is going to be super helpful for the review committee. But we know that some projects might need a little bit more outlining and you know, ideally I would like to consider, we're going to do a speaker series. I'm going to consider here's a list of people that are on my wish list, and this person might cost this much, this person might cost this much, etc. So you'll also have the opportunity to upload, I want to say up to four additional documents. Two can be like scanned PDFs where you might want to save a, a website or a document that explains a particular piece of equipment you want to buy, and you also can upload up to two pictures to your application. So what, in our opinion, makes for a successful application? Well, we're looking for things that are original, innovative, exciting, different, and unique. Thinking outside the box, thinking big, 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 as Bobby would say, like, you know, what, what is the absolute pie in the sky on your idea and wh where do you think, you know, you can take this concept? Obviously, as many details as you can provide, especially knowing that some of us that will be reading and scoring, Bobby, Bobby Abram and I will both read and score. We don't have a vote in the selection process, but, you know, picture that, you know, someone that has absolutely nothing, knows nothing about engineering or foreign language studies or whatever Nick told me that he was working on again. Like when you, when you're giving details, you want to keep in mind that a lot of us don't, 
don't know some of the specifics of the type of program. So being able to explain to us like exactly what does this do? Layman's terms, I guess. A realistic spending plan is obviously super helpful. Thinking like, you know, we have up to a million dollars to award in this grant cycle, but then we don't want you to request a million dollars because then that would leave no room for anybody else to get funding. So thinking realistically, like this is what it's going to cost for my project to, to come to fruition. But I realize if I get the whole thing, then um, there's not enough money left for other folks. Thinking strategically, like how does this new program initiative take my department, take my division to the next level? Does this allow us to be more competitive for getting students or developing research? Does this allow our, I know uh, Professor Kuroki was thinking of you know, really changing the way you do your workload and and taking that to the next level. So thinking in, in those types of terms, like this program, getting the seed seed money for this program is going to, you know, take us from from B to C to D and and forward from there. The next thing here is what can you do if awarded funding as opposed to what you won't be able to do if you don't get the funding. So the the way you are skewing this application is going to be my department will go from good to great with this grant money as opposed to my department will not be able to service students appropriately without this money. So we want to think on the on the progress of like, where are we taking the program rather than this is going to sink us. So we don't want to see that in the application. And then if you're not fully funded, what is plan B or even plan C? And the way, the way I describe this on, on Flex Day is kind of if you think of the GAP corporation model. So you've got your, your Banana Republic version of your grant, and then you have your GAP version of your grant, and then you have the Old Navy version. So thinking in those terms, like maybe you ask for $100,000, but if we only award you seventy five, dollars can you still make your program work? I hope that makes sense. Okay, continuing along the lines of what is going to make for a successful application. What we learned going through the process last year at this time is that taking space and power needs into consideration really does need to be considered and thought through thoroughly. And you will, in some cases, very much need to consult with one of three departments on campus. So you've got facilities that you may need to connect with. You've got IT that you may need to connect with. Did I say three? I meant two. In terms of where where things are going to go and how they're going to be installed. I'm thinking too about like when you buy a when you buy a washer dryer pair at Home Depot, you have the option to check the box that says, do I want expert installation for this much money? Well, is what you're buying something that's going to be able to be installed by our facilities people or by yourself, or are you going to need to add that expert installation in the mix and include that into your, into your grant application? Thinking about power needs, where am I going to plug this in and do I have the right kind of power to plug something in? My husband was an electrician for a few years. And so again, with the washer dryer model, he had to make a conversion to one of our one of our electrical outlets in the house in order to plug the the dryer in that we that we bought. So is that kind of modification going to need to be made in your particular case? And thinking again about space needs, you're going to create a workspace for students in a particular organization, and you've got just the room in mind to have this, but you don't really know who's responsible for that room or if it's even available for you to take for your initiative. So knowing like what's the planning for the space needs in, in the area that you're thinking of putting stuff. There was an example, a couple workshops from before, like buying, we're going to do a Peloton studio for students so we can have Peloton courses, but we have no idea where we're going to put these bikes. We just know that we want to have them. Well, if you don't know where you're going to put the bikes, there's kind of no point in requesting them. So those types of things are going to be super important to think about as you are considering the type of type of initiative you want to put forward. And we have a logic model thanks to Richard Larratt from Facilities, and I will make sure that we get that emailed out to you following the workshop. Clara, if you can make a note of everyone who is here so we can email that out. We handed that out at the 
at the sessions on Flex Day. And having that document from Richard was really incredibly helpful for us in terms of thinking of, wow, these are important things to consider as we're looking at evaluating these grant proposals. So we'll run through that very basically right now. In terms of questions to ask yourself in consideration, how does the project or initiative impact the workspace? So again, do I need space or reconfiguring of space? Is what I'm buying going to actually physically attach to the building or need to be installed in a specific place in the building? Does it need power and where am I going to plug it in? And then again, the checkbox for the expert installation, am I going to need to add that to my, my grant application? Where is it going? Do I have that space? Is that space assigned to my department or division? Is it part of the area where I work? And has my dean or my VP said, hey, absolutely, I'm behind this all the way and will support the need to have it in this particular room. I, you know, I'll write something or whatever to explain that particular approval piece. What's the life of your project or initiative? So is there something that you're going to have to upgrade in two or three years if you buy it? Are there long or short-term costs associated? So using the Peloton example, again, once you buy the bikes, that's great. But if you're going to use the Peloton model, there's a subscription service that goes with it and you pay monthly. So yeah, we have all these bikes, but if we don't have the subscription costs to go with it, then having that program doesn't really work. Am I going to need to institutionalize this budgetary wise? So is my my dean or my director going to be able to look at me and say, yes, well, you know, you get the seed money and start up, but to pay the continuing costs, we've got that for you. And I don't know if anybody went to Dave Colley's sessions on Flex Day. I think they're rolling out some new annual planning software because we do that process every year. So is getting the grant then going to change the way that your department approaches your annual planning? Those are things to think about too. So will IT need to service this equipment? And is it something that we are qualified to service? Will we need to buy a service agreement? And what does that cost? Making sure you're including that in your grant. And and talking to IT to say, hey, we are we would like to introduce this initiative. It's going to require software and hardware A, B, and C. Let us know what you think of this particular company slash product and how can it be serviced. If you're thinking of getting laptops with special software, are we going to have to pay for an upgrade to that software in a couple of years? Does IT know that? Those are some other things to, to keep in mind. Okay, so now we're going to fast forward to April-ish, and yay, congratulations, you guys. You are grantees for the 2023-2025 cycle. Give yourselves a round of applause. Woo, this is so exciting. So now we're going to come to the recognition event, and we're going to celebrate, and then you get to sit through another one of these fantastic Zoom events where Clara and I outline some things for you. The orientation program that we have is going to kind of walk through. We have five pieces of paperwork that you'll use to conduct your grant purchasing business. We have an MOU. We have a kind of a prerequisite form. There's the actual funding form itself for disbursement requests. If you have items that you're ready to purchase, and you kick that over and Clara will buy that stuff for you. Or in cases where you might need to buy something at a local office max or office depot, we will allow you to spend some of your own money and submit for reimbursement. There's a dollar limit on that. So you can't, can't fund your new drone with your $10,000 credit limit American Express. But if you've got to buy some special paper at, at, at office max, we'll We'll kick that back over to you. And we will walk you through the process of doing the stipend request thing. It's a it's a beast on its own that Clara and I, you know, I still don't fully understand it. Thank goodness for Clara that she does. It's it's a little bit of a sticky wicket, but we'll walk you through that as well. There is the facilities request form that you can fill out again, and you've consulted with facilities ahead of time, so they know this is coming, but this form will kind of help you go through the motions of. This is being delivered. This is the room it's going to go in. These are the power needs, et cetera. And 
of course, if you're to look for, to consult, I would say start with Linda Valencia at facilities, and then she can give you a handful of, of information and whether or not it, you need to talk to Richard directly, or if you can talk to Carl, Carl Schaefer, but, but that will get you, get you moving in the right direction. And then th these are just some things that were shared with us from grant recipients of the 22-24 cycle. Projects that had a student collaborative involvement where, you know, they have skin in the game. So I think also in natural sciences, there is a, a field study in geology, I want to say, that was funded, that students helped participate in, you know, deciding what that trip would look like. The, the opportunity potential to involve other campuses or other organizations is really special. Bobby was quick to remind us too that for some things, like we had a, a grant request from the last cycle that was not funded where a group, a, a particular academic department wanted to involve all the high schools in, in the mix, but they didn't have the preliminary conversation with folks in the school district on whether or not this was a program that they wanted and they were on board with. So if you've got something where you think there's going to be collaborators outside of PCC or even within PCC, getting that sort of letter of support, letter of cooperation from that organization or that department is, is super helpful to have as part of your grant application, or at least the initial conversation to, to be had. An interdisciplinary scope of product project is fantastic. If you can find a way to pull together things from different departments to interdisciplinary, you know, impact the, the students that way. And I'm thinking back to an old grant requests that had come in when we still had the quote mini grants program. And that is the drone I was referring to before. They wanted to do a history of water project that involved natural sciences, visual arts, photography, and then the English department. And that was a really fascinating concept of, of study that we that we did fund. Very different from the way this program is set up, but that's that's an example that just off the top of my head. The specific budget should also include any consumables that you're gonna buy and transportation. So going back to Maggie Rivera's example of the campus tour she'll be taking students on this summer, you've got to include the renting of the vans to drive everybody around. Or like Charlene Potter has the bee, the beekeepers club now with her grant, and she has to indicate in, in her thing when she needs to buy, I don't know, beekeeping nets to put over your head so you don't get stung, stuff like that. Th those things I'm sure need to be replaced from time to time. So keeping in mind if you're going to need to buy things multiple times, supplies, I guess. If the project is part of already existing curriculum and leverages resources already available, that's fantastic. So you have this one study program that will that's already part of your curriculum and your program, but having this money to take it to the next level Obviously, we're looking at, you know, that whole concept of taking a good program and making it great. So that's really helpful and is, is rewarded, appreciated by the selection committee. Projects that expand a department's reach and provide training, workshops, and advising. So a fantastic example of this is what Don Lowell is doing over at the Small Business Development Center. They obviously already work with supporting entrepreneurs entrepreneurship for students, and they requested money to have a speaker series and a bunch of Zoom workshops throughout the year. I've actually attended a couple of them, and they're fantastic. So they have they are paying speakers out in the field and putting, putting the series together. And then those experiences going to the next bullet point and events that create an ecosystem and a community that's kind of something that's happening with their with their business workshop series that they're doing out of. So the SBDC already existed and they already had this kind of programming, but now our funding from the grant program is helping them take that to the next level. So funds being spent on outside trainers, marketing, and a signature event, that, that stuff is all super fantastic as well. Okay, so from now until March 3rd, I'm your original point of contact if you have questions or you want to walk through something. At the Flex Day event, Bobby suggested and offered to, if, if, you're, if you've got an idea floating around and, you know, you, you're not exactly sure how to get it down on paper and create, you know, bring it to fruition, email me and let's, 
let's meet over here at the foundation office and let's kick around your ideas. Because again, I read and I will score, but I don't have a vote. So I don't, you know, there's no conflict of interest. If you sit down with me and ask me what I really think in terms of what's realistic for funding, is this going, is this going to make sense? I'm more than happy to do that. Clara can sit in as well and kind of walk through from the logistical standpoint of buying stuff, like what makes, so yeah, we, we welcome that. We encourage it. And actually, I'm going to stop sharing and do a new share. I'm going to, so we can do questions really quickly while I'm pulling up the application form so you guys can see that. Just going to open this up and then I'll do a reshare. Anything on anybody's mind that you want to ask while I'm logging in? We all feel pretty good. That makes me happy. Okay, almost there. <clears throat> this is what happens when you have like eight other windows open and you're running a Zoom call at the same time. Talk amongst yourselves. Okay. All right, I'm going to share my screen again and kind of show you what this looks like. Okay, can you see the screen that says Community Excellence Grants? Everyone can see that. Okay. We are looking at this from the administrator standpoint. So I'm going to first show you this here is the link and I'm going to go put it right now in the chat for you all. This is where you are going to enter your application. And so let me go to applicant view here. I don't think I can search this by opportunity. So I'm just going to put this in here. Can you still see the screen? Okay. So that link is going to take you here, PCC Community Excellence Grants. And for, for the purpose of our students who may find this and decide that they want to apply to, I put this is not a student scholarship. So the, the details here and, oh, I got to change this. You're just going to go here and click apply. And it is going to take you to the application questions. So you're going to list your name and the names of any other co-applicants that may be part of your process. And then the lead applicant. So whoever is going to be the person that's going to initiate the paperwork with Clara and do the purchasing and put things together and, and be held accountable for your midterm reporting, et cetera. We want that person's email to be in here. What exactly are you requesting? So we talked about that. That's a short answer question. <clears throat> and then please describe in detail how your project benefits faculty staff, how will you make that difference occur, and how will you know the project is successful? This is in essay format and you can do bullets or a numbered list or bold or italicized things if you need to do that. So this is, an, again, all written narrative, no uploading. So you may want to create your responses in a Word doc and, and pull that over if you want. Then here is your budget document, and we want that to be PDF, Word doc, or Excel. So which school or department is represented in this request? And then we do want to know who's the person, dean or director, who is going to be part of overseeing the, the project. So for that, you're going to click on add a new reference and put that person's name and email. And then once you hit finish and submit, the system will generate a notice to that person. And basically, we just want to know that they're in the know. So even if you are the person that's going to be doing the work, we still need for this person to be this reference name to be somebody that you report to directly. So if I'm putting in a grant request for a project that I'm going to do that's not foundation related. I'm not going to put my name and my email here. I'm still going to put Bobby's name and Bobby's email here because Bobby needs to be in the know that I'm that I'm exploring this. And then here's where you can add any kind of other files together. You can do up to two additional files in PDF, Doc, or Excel, and then you can do up to two images. You can obviously continue to save and keep working on your grant application if you want, but the, the main thing is to make sure that the finish and submit button is 
pressed and that your application goes in before 11.59 p.m. on Friday, March the 3rd. Um, so that gives you the opportunity to go back in and add things and tweak things and keep your application there. Or you can always just choose to do all of this stuff separately and then add everything in before you before you upload your your grant request. Okay. Are there any other questions or concerns that this group has before we move on with our day? I had one question. Yes, ma'am. Uh, so would you say, because our, my idea, I mean, obviously, you know, as you mentioned, this grant is for a limited what, two year, when academic, two academic years, right? So our, our goal was, I mean, we tried it in the English department, funded with English department funds. Now we want to take it campus wide and and try to maybe do presentations or or coordinate because we don't have to do the presentations the hypothesis folks are really yeah, good yeah. with the very with the different subject areas mm -hmm. and then you know our goal is to get it institutionalized like we've done that before but with other software so would it be good to show like a timeline of how we, you know, where, what we've done already, mm -hmm. what we plan to do differently with this funds to advance and then where we want to take it. Ultimately. Yeah. Yeah. I love that idea, especially if, I mean, you're wanting to get a software program that can be used and paid for with funding within your department, but you also want to spread the word that it's a great program that other departments may want to institute. And so you may want to, I don't know, find a couple willing partners that would come in and say, hey, we want to have the software too. And, and we'd be willing to be part of a project that would, that would get it. And then, you know, again, when that annual planning time comes, if multiple departments are, are requesting this, I think that that would probably give, put some extra weight on the folks that make those decisions, being able to say like, yes, we want to put future money into this. So, and again, and having that conversation too with IT, like how realistic is this to have, you know, on board on, on an enterprise level? I was playing around with Asana yesterday because I know we have the opportunity to use Asana in Microsoft Teams. And I was looking at the pricing and it, you know, if you've got teams of this many people, it's this, this much per user. If you've got teams of this many people, and then they, everything's like enterprise pricing, you need to contact us. So I think Potentially, we're we're talking about a, a program that would be in the enterprise pricing realm. So, what does IT have to say about that? What's their what's their their take on on whether that is something the whole campus would benefit from using? But but yeah, I mean, if you have other departments that are familiar with it and have used it, and you can get them to to share in your grant application, or that's part of your timeline too. Yeah, I, I include all of that. I think that'd be great. I know and you've got me, you've got me really curious now to see like what, yeah, it, it's, all about. it's a really cool activity and, but um, the students seem to, to really gravitate towards it and it's very user-friendly and it works really well with OER techs, mm -hmm. you know, which was one of the big complaints about from f faculty in our division. Well, I don't want to switch to OER because the students aren't annotating as much and here's a great way okay. for that to happen, to take notes, to retain the info, and then to think more critically about the reading material, but it's funny, we're already over, you know, we had the money to support because it's like a per user. Fee. Yeah. So we had enough to support this many and we're already over, but, but the hypothesis has been really generous. I mean, obviously they want business, but they've sure. been very generous because we've gone over and there's more, because we showed it to more faculty and they're like, oh, we want to try it. We're like, oh no, but we're over. Right. What do we do? <laughs> <laughs> you know? So I'll, uh, yes. So anyways, thank you. I think that really helps. Yeah. Awesome. America put something in the chat for reference. Does it have to be a dean or director? My boss is a coordinator. May I put her? And yeah, I think that's fine. That's fine. We can always circle back to a higher level person if we have to. Does that help, America? Yes. Okay. Fantastic. Did anyone else have questions? Yes, Nick. Yeah, I, I had one of actually about the reporting process of, of progress throughout the grant. I, I'm not sure if there's a proper format for that or, or what that looks like. I'm actually talking to Bobby about that today. We had a we had a couple of of ideas. I was just going to kick out an email to everybody saying, you know, it's about midterm reporting time. Here's the things we want 
you to respond on, but then Bobby wanted something more. What's the word I'm looking for? I just like space on what I want to call something, a uniform, something that, that everybody will fill out the same thing. So I'm now I'm thinking like, oh, maybe we just need a Google form to do this and that'll be easier. So I'm going to confirm that with her at 10 a.m. today. And then you should get something from us shortly reminding current grant people about the reporting cycle. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. That is coming. And then the final report is actually going to to be something super simple. At the end of the two-year grant cycle, we'll probably do a little foundation event at like the university club and everybody will come and bring free pictures that kind of outline what they did and everybody will get a chance to share. So we are very blessed. Z Scott's organization is not requiring the same level of grant reporting that say the federal government wants. So we can, you know, we can make it a little bit more fun and celebratory, which is, which is nice for you guys. Cause it's, you know, if you manage grants on a regular basis, you're like, oh my God, another annual report. This is awful. A little less um, stressful. Yeah. We want to, we want to make it fun and happy. Okay. Is there anything else I can support this group with in the immediate here and now? Otherwise I'm going to run to my staff meeting. Okay. Well, you, you all know how to reach me. If you need to ask me questions, by all means, if you want a meeting and you want to kick some stuff around, we can do it here. We can do it via Zoom. I'm happy to look at anything before you submit it. If you want my feedback on that, you know, I, I was telling them at Flex Day, one of my favorite things in the whole world is when a student comes to me and says, I'd like some input on my personal statement. And, you know, I'm able to talk them through that. And so my second favorite thing in the whole wide world would be a faculty or staff member saying, I would like some input on my, my grant application and for me to be able to support you all in that way. So that's my story. Y'all know where to find me. And I'm just going to wish you all a lovely day and a happy week. And I look forward to seeing all of your amazing applications in March. Thank you. Thank you all. Have a great day. Thank you so much.